this everything is seems relatively sharp, the frame. Yeah. The bubbles, the lemon, the glass. The mm. the hand behind is blurry. Um I wanted to try and put some kind of background. Uh-huh. Some texture patterns behind but didn't get to run with that, but yes. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I guess the only comment I can say is just always try to keep a few pretty good standard with your photography as in like making sure things are horizontal, you know, like straight and stuff. So, so there'll be minimum amount of editing in the, in, in the future because you find that editing is, is not something fun yeah. when, when you start doing it professionally. Like because, you know, we do a lot of photos if you have to edit a lot you have to spend hours and hours in front of the camera so to to keep a good habit like try to cre- create a, a good habit at the start is like just making sure it's all uh, horizontal right. yeah. is yeah horizontal okay. straight and stuff then you don't have to edit as much okay. okay so this is a nice shot no, but what what can you tell what can you tell me that you feel that is that could be better Yeah, that's one thing. What's the other thing? Okay, so here, what's your aperture here? I've used uh, five point six. Yeah, again, you can see the the flower at the front is sharp, and then the back is becoming blurry. Okay. So it's like bigger, a uh, small aperture. Yeah, so it becomes like. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just not complete. It's a mm-hmm. bit more like mm-hmm. okay, half of it is like bl- getting to Some. be blur, mm-hmm. and that then spoils the whole objective of this image, which is like you pouring it into a bunch of flowers. The flowers disintegrating at the back. Mm-hmm. That's why I say you know like this is not good for zoom. Uh, it's better to use a uh, fifty mil or a standard, yeah. the the uh, lesser that. Okay. I mean, sorry, more depth. Yeah, so that issue with this whole set of images, I used a similar lens, so that's going to yeah. be standard. But yes, I've noted that. Um, I will try. It. And the shutter speed here? Uh, sh- this one is 1000. So you haven't, you have not changed the shutter speed from 1000? No. No, okay. So that you have to, I mean, you have to try different things just to see the results. Because you can see the water is... Okay, now again, because of the depth of field, it can be either depth of field blur or motion blur mm. could be that of you blur actually because you can see uh, let's zoom in here okay uh, um, go to here yeah step of you depth of field blur yep and another reason as well, when you use longer lenses, um, there's a lot of glass in between. Mm-hmm. So it it will also reduce the sure. the quality of the image overall. That's why fifty mil is still one of the best. It's only got a, it's got so little yeah. glass, so like lesser. Yeah. The light has to go through. I see what you mean. Yeah. Uh, so basically, from the last time, um, yeah. there was the last three, like uh, the first three sessions or yeah. four sessions, okay, yeah. I was very focused on using my 50 lens. I use, it's my favorite and I use it for most things, yes, right? Yes, yes. But then one of the sessions you told me, have you tried using 18 to 55? Okay? Yeah, yeah. So that's the point I felt where I, it, maybe I must try and experiment with yeah. all of them. So that's why I chose this lab. Otherwise, my first go-to for everything yep. is 50 because yep. I like it so much but yep. so for me the objective of this picture mm-hmm. is to sort of capture the 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 sort of colors of the clouds the sky yeah 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 I, I don't know what I could have done to get it a bit better but to my eyes it was looking amazing yeah okay yeah I mean th- th- that's good for the, the sky for sure Using a 24 millimeter lens f8, uh, 1.3 seconds. Were you shooting on your tripod? Yes. Okay, yeah. Good. f9, 125 ISO. Okay, yeah. 
What do you have any questions on this one? Um, I feel like it could be better. Just don't know. How how could it be better? As in, like, what what do you want? What do you? Um, so how I do you want? I feel like the I'm getting the sky very nicely. Yeah. But I feel like the bottom part is looking pretty dull to me. Okay, so this is quite a typical. Uh, a lot of photographers would face this sort of problem. Can I guess? So I was, yeah. I was just I, looking a lot on how to get some images. Like yeah. for example, like I've been watching a lot of videos now. Yes. Just even on my own. Yeah. Um, and I've I don't know this I know I don't know if this is what you were going to say, but I've seen that when you there's two contradicting pictures yes. here at the top and the bottom. Mm. The setting you need for the top is different from the setting you need from the bottom yes. for the bottom because up you want as much you, you know you want the exposure to be a bit more yeah okay um, so that it can capture everything right yes um, so I've read that people shoot the same image in different and then they club it together. Is that, is that true? I mean, it's okay, so <coughs> so there's a few there's a few ways to do this. Okay, okay one is um, in the past a lot of people use those uh, filters, gradual filters. So what what it is is basically a glass that okay. is um, it's like a sunglass. You know, when I mean, you wear sunglasses, yeah. things uh, kind of like it tones down the brightness. Yeah. So this gradual filter is would be you can buy them and it's like. At the top part is darker, and then it gradually become bright, brighter. So it's like a sunglasses with like, mm. you know what I mean. So then it balance out the. Ah, okay, so up where it's brighter and down where yes. it kind of yes. sends the light from the top to the bottom, that kind of thing. Kind of like not send, but, but just yeah, reduce I mean, the amount of the image. reduce the amount of the brightness of the front. And so then you have to increase the exposure because mm. of the front is being the top is being uh -huh. dark. So yeah, I mean, I saw people using it for waterfalls. Like uh, yeah, that that is more like an ND filter. So that's more like a, a filter that you can make the whole thing, the whole picture, darker. Okay, okay, that's a different one. Let's let's not get there. Okay. But this but this is more of a gradual uh, okay. filter where it makes the overexposed part of the um, oh. image darker. That is what, so when there was this video I saw of someone trying to capture the waterfalls and the leaves, if you see a waterfalls and there's little trees, the leaves were looking very bright, okay, and uh, like overexposed. So when the person put the filter in, the leaves were appearing very green, just like normal green as opposed to the very dark green. So it does seem like the similar kind of filter that you're talking about or not. Yep. That's neutral density. Uh, yes, neutral. So, so that is that is more like uh, the whole, the whole filter mm -hmm. is one density. Yeah. Okay. So it's different from this. This is gradual. Mm -hmm. So the top part is dark, and then oh, the bottom okay. part is light. Because mm -hmm. at the moment, the bottom mm -hmm. part needs a lot of light. The mm -hmm. top part has too much light. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's one way. Second way is. Um, to do bracketing, mm -hmm. and this is a bit more advanced. So uh, the photographer would take maybe like five different exposure. Mm -hmm. One to expose the sky, mm -hmm. one to expose the mm -hmm. you know like so different different level of exposure, and then they they merge it together, merge it together. Then it becomes more neutral. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? That is like. It, that is manipulating the picture, right? Or not, you wouldn't call that? Uh, some people would say that sort of is the uh, HDR, high dynamic range, to increase. And then the, the third way is post edit, post um, post processing. Mm -hmm. So very quickly, I'll just show you. I'll just show you very quickly. Mm -hmm. And obviously, if if you shot this in in raw, mm -hmm. it will be it will be. Much easier to post process, but obviously, yeah. I mean, this is just practice, but I'm just going to show you roughly how it's done. Okay, this is part of the learning process. All right, so, um, so, so post processing, what you can do is you can increase the shadows. See, if you increase the shadows, see, can you see that? So, it, it, the top part is not being changed, just the shadows is being increased. 
there you go then you've got like a more mm. uh, and then you also can decrease the highlights if you decrease the highlights see the top part becomes more there's more definition there now mm. can you see that mm -hmm. yeah so now it becomes more mm. complete the image becomes more then you can also work with the white but there's not much white so the blacks you can make it more contrasty so if you if you increase that if you get more details like that see mm. it looks totally like a like a different like your eyes don't see this all right so but if you can go the other way and it, that would just makes the, the the black a bit darker so this is what a lot of photographers were playing with at post processing all right and then of course you got the exposure here which is you know you can just you know increase it uh contrast then you can make it more punchy so this this would be roughly what one way of editing mm -hmm. and then obviously there's other ways as well where you can separate the two two images, images. yeah okay. Fair enough.